Oh, baby, Tuesday edition of the pod of the DNBA show. Glad you guys are Glad you guys What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the DNBA show. Yay. Sorry, I'm off. DNBA show, DNBR Nuggets podcast. We are presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Make sure to use the code DNBR when you sign up and download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Sitting here on a Tuesday. Harrison Wind, joined by these two guys on my right. First off, it's Brendan Vogt. Real cozy vibe today, fellas. Got the Subus on, got my old Navy joggers, <laughs> and my old man winter sweater, and my coffee. I feel good. I feel good. So I need winter- you to dress more professional so I know you're taking this seriously next time. All right. Leather jacket's coming back out. Yeah, yeah. or at least or at like least a-, a leather jacket. I wouldn't be mad about a suit. I was thinking about what or, or if, shoes with a back. If I didn't run it, well, that's asking too much. If I didn't run it by you guys first, and for a month I just showed up in a suit with makeup every day for the show, thought about that for a little. But oh, I bet you didn't see that one through. That's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I went with the I, suit I, boots. I bet you. I bet you were pretty close to pulling that one off. <laughs> yeah, you were very close. Also joined by Eric Weedham. You know him as D Line. What's up, guys? Hey, you've been on the internet today. <laughs> Yeah, what's going on online? Fun day on the internet. Fun day in the office, too. I'm going to tell you guys about what just happened before the show. Big news. There's a trash can in the office that nobody can see that's just just been overflowing with trash for the last week and a half, maybe two weeks. Ryan Konigsberg just emptied it. Shout out, RK. Thank you so much. Let's go. Has anyone else (laughs) in the employee just been looking at that thinking... Someone should do. Oh, of course. Someone We've all looked something. at it. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I never had the thought. I just assumed it would be You're taken just care gonna of by keep letting it Ryan pile Conan's higher and higher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, shout out RK for finally wow. taking the trash. It's a out. whole new day. Big development here at DNVR HQ. Um, anyways, on today's show, we got a mailbag edition for you guys. We got a lot of great questions about the Nuggets, the Nuggets rotation. The Nuggets at the trade deadline. Get some trade talk going oh, yeah. here on January 3rd. Tis the season. So we will get into that in one moment. First, though, I got to open with some breaking news. Uh oh. Breaking news just in from the National Basketball Association. Luka Doncic has won Player of the Month for the Western oh, Conference. No. No. Yeah. I'm hey, cool with it. You know what? Cheers, Luka. Cheers, Luka. He's had a, I mean, he's rattled off some incredible games. He they, really has. They're on a winning streak, right? Seven in a row. And that was, their vibes were plummeting. And they were like in contact with rock bottom. And yeah. Luca, not quite the same thing because it's not injuries, but his front office basically did the same thing to him. He's kind of on his yoke stuff from last year. So you won't much catch me complaining too much about Luca praise this season. I think he's earned it. Um, having said that, I do think Yoke's at the level with this award where it's like, well, you probably could give it to him every month, but might as well change it up. The Mavs went 11 and 6 in December. Luca went for an average of 35.1 points, 9.3 assists, 8.5 rebounds per game. He also just had some ridiculous bangers in there. Yep. Like ridiculous, ridiculous stat lines. For comparison, the Nuggets went 9 and 5, didn't play as many games. Nikola Jokic averaged 29.2 points, 12.3 rebounds, 10.1 assists. LOL. He averaged a triple double in December. It's unbelievable, man. It, it, it's like uh, ripping off stat lines and just like like explaining why they're so impressive is just like it's not it doesn't mean anything anymore. Well, especially this li- year. That's, that's this what year. I mean. Like the stat lines that are coming in every day, you're like, what? <laughs> Donovan Mitchell essentially had a 71 point triple double last night. Like that that yeah. part of it's kind of getting glossed over. The 11 assists. I'm not going to say we're the most impressive part of it, but we're a very impressive aspect of his line. Yeah, it's getting out of control. And without attempting to take anything away from I do think yeah. a part of it is that you have as many individually talented players as you've ever had. But there is there is a lot like a, a sort of saturation thing here where you're wondering, OK, at what point do I stop being impressed by 40? Well, Nicole Jokic, he also shot. 60.4% from the field <laughs> in December. I mean, it's stupid. Nikola Jokic. Oh, my God. Finish. No, I, I mean, that like, was all God. I had. Like, <laughs> Cook. That's the craziest thing. I mean, Nikola Jokic just, for, I mean, for my money, just pulled off one of the most impressive months that I have ever personally witnessed. 
But again, like the the NBA is out of control. Like it's absolutely out of control. Like numbers mean nothing. Up is down. Who, like what are we supposed to do? I, I I literally I can't be mad about this Luca thing. Do we have any theories about why we're seeing these just ridiculous stat lines this season? I feel like more than we did last season and years past. No, do you? I, I literally I can't call it. I don't know if it's something changed overnight, but it might just be an extension of a dynamic we've been sort of in or heading towards. Where again. I just think you have more guys capable of heliocentric kind of usage or oh, whatever. I love that word. Uh, heliocentric. heliocentric. That's how you guys know. I blog. <laughs> AKA ISO ball. <laughs> yeah, they have the ball a lot. But then also, you, it's like only nine guys are allowed to play defense anymore. That's my real. That's the biggest thing, I believe. And it's, yeah, so the, most of these guys, these best players are taking outrageous amount of free throws. When they're scoring, it's because defenses don't feel like they can guard these guys without that foul being called against them. It is something that it can be fun to watch, but it also I have plenty of doubts about it as far as like the ideal direction for the game. You know, yeah, I think the biggest factor is it's just impossible to play defense in the NBA. I think so, man. It really is. Like you said, I think there's five, six, seven guys who can get away with playing really physical defense. Yeah. Draymond Green is one of them. Marcus Smart, I think, is another. But even like Marcus Smart you, against the Nuggets, like he couldn't. He was getting whistled for tricky tack foul calls. Yeah, in that the game. only defense I've seen played this year was what the the Nuggets in did. a couple fourth no, quarters. No, what the Timberwolves did to Aaron Gordon last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was interesting. Um, but yeah, you just can't play defense right now. Remember last year at the beginning beginning of the season when there was like the emphasis yes. from the officials to let defenders defend and like cut out some of the ticky tack nonsense that we had seen develop yep. and ramp up over the last couple of years. That's just out the window now. We're <laughs> not even pretending anymore. They that did it again this year for the first month. Thing. You couldn't lean into shots. You can totally. Oh lean into man. Shots Chris again. Paul can get away with whatever he yeah, wants now. Totally. <laughs> uh, what a charmed life perimeter players must live. I know there are guys that throw their bodies around to get calls like AD and Embiid for the most part though. That's the biggest thing that's tough for me is the disparity. Like you yeah. watch a wing or a guard, if they drive and they throw their head back, they're getting a call. And, you know, Jokic looks like he was the stunt man for the Revenant bear scene after a game and he shot like six free throws. <laughs> so he's gonna have that scratch on his arm forever. Maybe into next season. And I don't want that to be That too might be a multi season injury dude it'll never go away it's a scar or it's just going to reopen and that's not even supposed to be a protecting yoke take it's really just the just difference between the bigs and the perimeter players yeah what a charmed life those little guys live oh god it it's would never been it would better, suck being be a sure. big man in today's nba yep it would it would really <laughs> suck it would all oh, right. You can't guard Steph. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I, I can't. You're right. Oh, look at uh, this guy, this seven footer get blown by guarding Steph one on one. Oh, okay. <laughs> all, right. Uh, all right. We got a big mailbag to get into. A lot of great questions that you guys hit us with. So without further ado, let's go there. I'm going to leave this up to Kale. He's going to put some questions on the screen, I think, and we are just going to talk about them. So um, let's start with this one. This comes from the homie Josh Barnett. Where's your confidence level at the moment that the Nuggets can go all the way this season? What needs to happen both internally and externally for that mm. to happen? Who wants to start with this? I'll one? go first. I'm very confident. I I've said that. this a million times. Like I, I am quite convinced the Nuggets have everything that they need to go for. Like, what do they need to do? They need to not play uh, important playoff games on a back to back. Um, <laughs> they don't have to do that, luckily. Okay, in the then I think that they're fine. Like any time, <laughs> any failing we've seen from the Denver Nuggets over the last like, however long, it's like, okay, they're in LA and they were there for too long before the game started. Okay, they were flying, they had to fly to Minnesota the night before. Like if it's just like a, a, a game where there's no outside factors that you yeah. can like really point to, the Nuggets have been solid. They've been great, in fact. Um, they really do have just weapons that other teams would dream have. And frankly, the, not, we dreamed about having them that's the last just, two that's years. Right. We've been that's dreaming exactly of this right. squad. Um, and Nikola Jokic only gets better every year. Really, with Jokic, all things are possible. And to just have, like, enough around him. He doesn't need, like, he doesn't even need transcendent players <clears throat> around him. He just needs, like, competent players. And he mm -hmm. needs, on any, any given night, one running mate to go along with him. And there's just, like... 
enough options that it's going to happen uh, on any given night. Like, I'm supremely confident in the Denver Nuggets currently. What about you, Vote? Yeah, it's kind of like the confidence board we did last night, right? I would say kind of in that seven range. I have seen enough to believe in the season and the roster and the direction of the season. Mm-hmm. It's not a shut, you know, shut case, right? Like, they could have done much more to make us feel like, oh, they can beat anyone at any time. You wouldn't say that. The baseline, though, the baseline of how competitive they can be in bad performances, you know, what it, the various ways they can win, and then just having the best player in the world or one of, at the very least, is the biggest luxury. So I think this team can do it, but it's not... I don't know if I would sit here and say, yeah, I think they're for sure the best team. I just think they've put themselves in that category and in the mix. Yeah, yeah it's like they, they, they are at least at a place where it's reasonable to think i mean in a a season where there's not a clear best team they most assuredly have a puncher's chance absolutely at at, at finding themselves at the top someone will pick them right when the playoffs start someone outside of denver will oh people have been picking them all year sure yeah i think somebody will i think they've got the talent like you guys said you just watch the nuggets you know throughout this regular season and the different teams that they're up against night in, night out. Like, it's so clear they have so much more offensive talent than most teams. Yes. <laughs> Nicole Jokic, Jamal Murray, Michael Porter Jr., Aaron Gordon, KCP. Just the starting lineup right there puts most teams' top three, four, five scores to shame. The offensive talent is ridiculous on this team. I still want to see more defensively. Sure. To, like, be at the utmost confidence. What, what's the top level on the excitement meter? Uh, out, of out of control. To be out of control, <laughs> I got to see more from the defense. We've seen it in fourth quarters. We've seen it in games here and there. We've seen it against some of the toughest competition the Nuggets have played, which is very encouraging. But I still want to see it a lot more over the next month or so. January is going to be big. They got a lot of home games. They got a lot of home games against more tough competition. Yep. So if they can bring it defensively, against that tough competition against the Clevelands of the world, the Clippers of the world, then I'm going to be believing even more. But I I still have to see a little more defensively. I think that's more than fair. I'll add on to that. I think some of that is MPJ and not just him, because I actually think he's made great strides defensively this year, particularly as the low man, the the, the utility of the size is well documented. Um, But so through that point or that perspective, staying healthy, you just want to see MPJ on the floor. Sure from here until the end of the season because when he plays, he gets better. So I've seen enough to feel it's not quite the same wild card roll the dice that it was playing him last season in terms of what you can trust from him. But you obviously want to see him stay on the floor for another lengthy stretch before you go, all right, I'm banking that. I'm putting eggs in that basket. Yeah. And there's still some work the Nuggets have to do in terms of incorporating Michael Porter Jr., And making sure he's not kind of left on an island while everybody else is operating as one. That was your big take in your piece this morning from last night. I think it's spot on. I went back and watched the fourth quarter of last night's game. Michael Porter Jr. checked in at the eight-minute mark of the fourth quarter. He checked out at the one-minute mark of the fourth quarter. He played for seven straight minutes, 13 possessions. Do you know how many times he touched the ball in those 13 possessions? Three times. He touched the ball three times not enough. in seven minutes and 13 possessions. And he was four of six from three. That's the thing. Coming into that, he was like had 15 points on five of eight shooting on a night when the Nuggets weren't really having like that great of an offensive night. And he was just like shut out in the fourth quarter. He didn't touch the ball. He like wasn't getting anything run from him. And I think it's on both the Nuggets and Porter to keep him in the mix but um it was pretty jarring last night so denver's got to work on that as well yeah he, th- he can't go silent like he did last night no, no I, I think i mean i i really find that a lot of like the issues that the nuggets have are always when they're trying to figure out who's supposed to do what yeah you know, like jamal for sure jamal's presence has been very like back and forth and he is he and Jokic are always the go-to um going down the stretch so that just kind of understood night like last night like where you know jamal doesn't really have it going it's it's it is a little confusing like what you know 
what is everybody's role when everybody's on the floor and and we're talking about crunch time um and I feel like, you know, a lot of that just comes through repetition, just playing together. And that, that's like the one thing still, even in this season where we have everybody back, they, you know, we, they haven't been back sure. consistently. And so it's just a lot of this I, I feel like is going to be worked out more yeah. and more as they go. I mean, because Michael Porter Jr., you know, like if you want to talk about what can push a team over the top, it's like a dagger three that, that – you know, the, at the right moment, which is like tailor made for Michael Porter Jr.'s skill set. He's like hit them he before in the, the playoffs. Table. Absolutely. And then, you know, with that steady diet of the two man game, um, I just feel like, I, 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 again, like uh, whether we're talking about like, do they have what it takes? Like, yes. Can they figure out how to use all of the tools at their disposal to be TBD. Is it all going to come together in the end? Exactly. I think they're trending that way. We'll see, though. You know, but we'll I, th see. I think you've we've seen enough as a fan base to earnestly stand on solid ground and say, I, like, I'm excited. I want to see this thing through. They've, they've yeah, got man. a chance. Gotcha. Yep. Hell yeah. All right. What else do we have in the mailbag here? Let's go to question number two. Uh, this comes from Jimmy Joe Yurkich. Based on everything we've seen so far, give me your 10 players for the playoffs, the 10-man playoff mm. rotation. Who do you think deserves the spots now? Okay, Starters. this is fun. Starters are in as they yep, are. Those five. Yep. Starters. Jamal Murray, KCP, Michael Porter, Aaron Gordon, Nicole Jokic. There's five. Jokic is in, yes. <laughs> Bones will <laughs> play, think man. about that one. Bones will play. I think it would have to be so disastrous between now and the end of the Who season. Who do you think is the most likely guy off the bench, though? We should start there. Brown. Bruce Brown. Oh, yeah. Right? So he's your sixth. Yes. Both Browns, actually, too. Uh, we'll see. I mean, that, that's the cost. Like, which the hope. I mean, <laughs> my 10 man playoff rotation <laughs> might be different than the Nuggets. It's true. <laughs> but yes, Bruce Brown, the most obvious uh, sixth guy. Yeah. Uh, then it's Jeff Green. Jeff Green, who's been out of the lineup for a bit here. Yeah, but I mean, like that. That's I agree. I think he's. Alone plays him if he's I think healthy. he's no a question. lock for the playoff rotation if healthy. Um, so there's seven. Then I, I think Bones is a, an absolute lock also. So he played in the playoffs last year. Why he wouldn't this year, I have no idea. Yeah, I think the thing that could hurt Bones' potential playing time is what we've seen the Nuggets look like with Bruce Brown at point guard. I think that's an option Denver didn't have last year. True. They Their other backup point guard was Fox Capasso. <laughs> um Bruce Brown, I mean, has proven to be a great fit at point guard. That seems like it's been his best position so far. So I think you've got that in the back of your mind. But yes, as of now, I think Bones Highland is in the rotation. Absolutely. Um, so that's eight. I think Christian Brown Christian would be Brown. nine. Yeah, it has to be. And I mean, usually your playoff rotation is nine, not ten. Um, I know. that. And then the tenth spot is just that other big man, potentially. Right. That they may not even... I mean, are they really going to play DeAndre Jordan? 16 wins? I mean, from from what I've seen, I don't think DeAndre Jordan or Zeke Naji are guys you want on the floor in the playoffs. I'm with you there. Um, so maybe that guy's not on the roster. Maybe, maybe. they just play those nine. Kind of goes back to that last question. And you've got Aaron Gordon you know? at backup center. Small ball. Yeah, that's one of the external things that I think you would like to see for the chances to go up or be short up. Yeah, yeah and then probably Vlatko, right? Vlatko's the other guy. Yeah. I mean, Vlatko has been indispensable to the bench he's been, for this last oh, stretch. This last stretch, he's been incredible. He's been FIBA Vlatko. Yeah, he's been the he Vlatko has. we all we, like, we always want to see. Legitimately helpful player. And of course, those minutes have really come because Jeff Green's been out of the lineup. But I mean, Vlatko, he's a guy who at least I trust in the playoffs. I trust Vlatko more than DeAndre Jordan, more than Zeke no Naji right now. Absolutely, no, question, no doubt. I have. Um, I mean, Vladko. I, I trust him as much as anybody on the Nuggets for in his role, right? Yeah, right, right. Like for him to come in, hit a timely shot, play. You know, if if not good, at least adequate defense. Mm -hmm. Be in the right place at the right time. All the things that we have always like really lauded about him are really coming to focus. Like, and he's playing with more confidence. Obviously, like he's as his career has gone on, like he's gotten more and more stable in his own view of himself as a player and it's like yeah you know like just seeing success and seeing playing time on a national stage like right, he's an international stage stages, big yeah stages. um he just looks 
he just looks like a veteran now. He just looks like he's no longer like a question mark. You just kind of know. He what does you're gonna feel get. like a veteran. He now. does. Kind of is in a weird way, even though he hasn't really played. Yeah. He is a professional basketball veteran. Yeah. He's a professional basketball veteran. He was a pro when he was a young man. You know, that's a thing to remember about him. Like he uh -huh. he's a he's been polished from a young age. So. And yeah. the mustache. <laughs> you know what, I mean? what do you think an NBA <laughs> player thinks when? They are running up the floor and Vlako Chanchar is guarding them. Oh, they're like, oh, this guy's from Europe. <laughs> they're thinking, <laughs> Who, who's this dude with the mustache? <laughs> they're thinking that was definitely a Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, the, the mustache not really adv taken advantage of in the United States, I have to say. Not, not to the extent as it is in Europe. Yeah. So to the question, Except I think Kale. Uh, I mean, Kale's I think, really the only example. yeah. Kale, Kale has the best mustache at the. He company. does have a good. He's got a kind of Andy Reid walrus stash. Yeah, but like Kale's running. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking just DMV. But Kale is like Matt largely Patrick's running. Kale's running unopposed at this moment. Like nobody else. Yeah, nobody nobody's, else is bold nobody's to trying to take that title from <laughs> Kale. I think he's got that on. My mustache is disgusting. <laughs> oh, we have to see this. It's so bad. We have. To, what happens first? You grow a mustache or uh, put on a suit. <laughs> yes, no. but as of now, I think Vlatko deserves that spot. Yes, absolutely. So. Yeah. But again, though, this is all going to be shuffled up when Jeff comes back because Mike will play. Michael, excuse me, will play him. Yeah. Oh, Michael. <laughs> all right, yeah. should we hit a break? Then get to some other uh, oh, mailbag no. questions on the oh, other side. Oh, my God. That's my job. It's okay. I, I Dude, can take I, this one. No one's got ever gone from casual to panic. So okay. maybe if you were in a suit, <laughs> you would have remembered to do the reads. Maybe Just if you were in a suit. Awesome. <laughs> Guys, Breckenridge Brewery is the official beer of DNVR. It's still Bronco season, barely. We're hanging on by a thread. Bro, uh, Let's ride. I think we've got one game left of this year. Let's ride this off a cliff, shall we? We've still got the Broncos country pale ale to drink. Make sure to pick some up. Um, from your local liquor store, local yes. grocery store. And the tease, without giving the name, there is a new Breckenridge Brewery, brewery uh, product on the horizon. Yes, a new product, a new beer. On the horizon. Stay tuned. It's Exciting has to things. do with the thing we talk about. <laughs> Us on the DNVR Nugget Show are very excited for this new beer. Yes, yes uh, we have. It's, it's. You should. This is legitimately like there, there's something very cool coming, um, not just from them, but also from us. Um, so stay tuned for this. Nice. Yes. But in the meantime, pick up some Broncos Country Hoppy Pale Ale from Breckridge Brewery. The official beer of DNVR is Breck Brew. If you don't know where to get Breck Brew, check out the Breck Brew Beer Locator on their website. That's where you can find out where to get Breckridge Brewery closest to you. Uh, also, right now, DraftKings Sportsbook, guys. Woo! When I throw down on NBA action, it's got to be with DraftKings Sportsbook. I love watching you throw down on NBA you action. Just throw like down that. nightly. I'm Sometimes like, you just throw your phone. I'm like, bro, are you throwing down on NBA Hell action? Hell yeah, right I'm throwing now? down. down the stairs, <laughs> just bet. throwing down on NBA action. <laughs> what do I do at night? Just you know, throw down. Just throw it down. Just throw it down. <laughs> it's got to be a DraftKings Sportsbook and official sports betting partner of the NBA. New customers right now can bet just $5 pregame money line on any NBA team to win their game. Get $150 in free bets if they do. Plus, right now, everybody can combine multiple bets for an even bigger payout with DraftKings Same Game Parlays. Download the app now to get in on the Holiday Hoops action. Sign up with code DNVR. Place a $5 pregame money line bet on any NBA team to win. Get $150 in free bets if they do only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code DNVR. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Woo. Also, going back to the thing we announced earlier, clear your calendars for the 13th. I'll say that. Oh. Ooh, Lucky the 13th. 13. January 13th. Not this Friday. Next Friday. Clear Friday the 13th, baby. We've had uh, great experience I with that thing in not, this company's I history. I wish you had not said that. <laughs> 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 I, I did not I did put that together, but now I feel That's terrible. a seminal <laughs> date in DMVR history. <laughs> cool. Super cool. Super sick. <laughs> uh, but yeah, clear your calendars for that. <laughs> All right. We are back here on the DMVA show, the DMVR Nuggets podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Use the code DMVR when you sign up and download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Let's continue on in the mailbag. What else do we have here? Uh, this comes from Koza. Uh, Koza. Who we met at the bar last night. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, we watched yeah. the game with Our Koza. guy. Our guy. Dude, I love this. Literally nothing better. Like, honestly, like, watching the Nuggets is fun. I've watched the Nuggets for years, largely by myself at home. 
then at the stadium or the, the arena by myself. And we talk about it, but like meeting the people in real life that also like the Nuggets that also like make this like ridiculous team a big part of their uh, identity. Yeah. Or, and like coming and actually like talk, it's like the be- it's the absolute best. It really is, man. It it makes every night like a great night, regardless of what the Nuggets do. Truly. Uh, but he writes in, do you think the second unit should find more post-up opportunities for Jamal Murray if he's staggering? He's become good at those, and it seems like a good option if you're playing five out with Najee and no DJ. I think it's a good point. Why not? Because right now, Jamal Murray's not doing much on that second right. unit. He's playing with Bones Highland. Bones Highland is dominating the ball with that group. And what that's meant is Jamal's just been the corner, been on the wing, just kind of a non-factor almost on a lot of possessions. So we've seen Jamal Murray in the post. We've seen the Nuggets go to that with their starting lineup at times to open games when he has a mismatch and, you Mm -hmm. know, when he has a mismatch throughout. If the Nuggets are going to play Jamal with that second unit, if they're going to continue to do that, I don't love that. But if they are going to continue to do that, yeah, give them some post-up opportunities because right now I feel like you're kind of wasting those minutes because he's just not really involved. With that second unit. So, yeah, I think it's a good point, and uh, I would love to see it. Yeah. Gosh. Jamal's been he's playing so weird lately. He's a weird player. Even, man. like, when he's getting into the paint, uh, not like a traditional post-up, but, like, a place where he's able to employ his post moves, like, they've been bad. Like, they've ended up in, like, weird fadeaways that he's just, like, really trying to, like, he's not using his footwork uh, the way that we've seen him use in the past where he's able to sort of, like, you know, like move around, end up with like kind of a, you know, circus finishes and things like that. He like, was so aggressive for that one stretch at the beginning of the third quarter and then a little bit in the fourth, but that was really it. Other than that, it was such a weird kind of passive night for I, him. I think you you hit the nail on the head, man. He, The weirdest thing about those minutes is he just doesn't do anything with that unit. You said last night he's just getting cardio. And, it's, and I don't think that's his fault. No, no, because no. Because no. it seems like what the Nuggets want to do with that bench is just pick and roll with Bones Island. Right. So then why is he th- why is he there? If Murray's out there, you'd think it would be to put the ball in his hands and alleviate right. the scoring and playmaking. It, it should or be like to, more shared responsibility between him yeah. and Bones. Yeah, it give, should be an equal partnership, maybe. Give like a, a way to vary the offense. Yeah. Like keep the defense on their toes. Like not you like you're not putting Jamal Murray in for his defensive prowess. Right. Like there's not a lot of other reason. To, yeah, he's not acting like a decoy. He's like literally mm-hmm. doing nothing. Yeah, and I think that can be a dynamic pairing. I mean, we've seen. Remember Jamal playing off Monte Morris? Yes. In years past, with the second unit, of course. That's something that was great for Denver's offense. Monte dribbled the ball. They had Jamal running off screens, running off pin downs. Then, like, he could come up and create on his own. It's worked before, but it hasn't worked with Bones for some reason. And I don't think it's because it's like necessarily Bones being selfish with the ball or not trying to get others involved. It just seems like that's what Denver wants its game plan to be, pick and roll with Bones. And then Jamal's just kind of sitting there. So any way that they can incorporate Jamal Murray, I'm, I'm for with that second unit if he's going to be playing with that group. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Otherwise, it just seems like a waste, a weird allocation. It is weird. And especially after a game last night, which – like, I know I still in my heart feel, like, frustration about. I can tell, like, the Nuggets Nation at large is, like, kind of, like, still feeling the pain from. Like, it just feels like the offense is, like, broken. But then, you know, like, we'll pl- they'll play this next game. They'll be like, oh, yeah. man, that's a great pairing. The offense, Jamal and Bones. The offense is, is fine. I mean, and also when you speak, when you look at that group defensively, Bones Highland, Bruce Brown, Jamal Murray, I don't know how far that's going to get you defensively. No. You need more size. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's move on here. This one comes from Omar. Uh, Denver's 10-7 and seven in games. Bruce Brown comes off the bench. He's a minus 72 in those games. Jesus. Is there a fix to Bruce Brown off the bench? Anything you're seeing with that bench unit that is causing him to struggle? Well, first of all, I think anyone who's playing with that bench unit. It's like having problems. That's the biggest thing. Numbers- his plus minus looks bad because he's spending most of his time with Bones Highland, whoever's the backup big. Um, Jeff, like whoever's been with that group and that group has been in the negatives for most of the year. But there are things you can do, right? And they learned this lesson, I think, with the starting lineup 
I don't put him at small forward if, if you don't have to. And it's another, mm-hmm. we, you just talked about it, it's another consequence of the, the Murray stagger is you're going Bones, Jamal, and Bruce. And so the offense is still sticky and you're not generating as many stops. I think, you know, whether it's the KCP or the AG, maybe preferably the latter, I think you just want to put guys who are appropriately sized and active at the right positions around yeah. Bones and just run as much as you can. And I think you're going to see everyone's plus minus maybe be aided from that. Yeah, I mean, anytime that we're looking at like problems with Bruce Brown, it's that he's on a three or he's on a... Too a, small. A, just he's not... He's put in a place where, yeah, it's like somebody's shooting over him yep. all the time. Or he's, you know, like his defensive skill and his like physical... Like w- what he... In my view, it, like what he's really good at is he is he's pretty rangy. He has pretty long arms and he's quick, but that doesn't matter if like he's just being asked to run out onto a shooter that is able to just not even see him and just shoot uh, without any resistance from the three, which happens all the time. Like it's just mi- being miscast, right? Like every time there's a Bruce Brown issue, it's because he's in the wrong spot. And he's just too small for whoever he's, he's being asked to defend. Yeah, I think Bruce Brown. I think if the Nuggets are going to win a championship, Bruce Brown's probably a big part of it. But finding the right role for him is key in that. And I feel like you've seen it these last you know, few weeks whenever Jamal Murray has not been in the lineup. But Bruce Brown at point guard works, man. It yeah. just does. It does. Uh, especially with the starters. Well, like everything the, he does is quick, you know? Yeah. yeah. For better or worse. He's also a little turnover prone. Have you, As you pointed out, he'll miss some ones at the rim. But there's a decisive and quickness and, and, and work rate to his starts that are beneficial. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you guys also have any questions in the comments, feel free to drop them. Kale will star them, and then uh, we can get to them at the end here. We do have a super chat already. D- oh! Dylan Hackett. What small ball bench pairings do you like the most with Green, Zeke, Vlatko, and AG potentially? Uh, oh. I mean, this... this is a question that could factor in in the playoffs because, you know, maybe they just don't play the traditional backup center and they try to play Aaron Gordon there. Um, I mean, Aaron Gordon and really any of those guys, yeah. I think, I think could be fine. They're, they're all pretty interchangeable. Um, I would. <sighs> it's kind of easy to say when Jeff hasn't been playing because you forget the things he does do well. Yeah. But I'm a little more inclined to go with someone who can play defense or will play more defense, you know, and maybe that's Vlaco. I don't know. I love what Vlaco's done this year. Um, I trust him. I think Michael Malone trusts him, actually, more so than other bench guys. Uh, but I I think Vlaco can kind of fit with everybody, though. I know. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. he's a freaking laser. I mean, he can he freaking makks everything. Laser. He, he's made everything from three so he can stretch the floor. Um, I, I definitely want him in there. All right, let's go to another question here. This one comes from our guy. You can call me Matt. When fully healthy, how would you figure out the Vlatko? A lot of bench rotation questions. I wonder why. A I lot know. of them. What do you think the you're story like, is like, on January? It's, it's almost <laughs> as though the starting unit is fine and the bench is uh, totally broken. So <laughs> yeah. we have to f- try to figure out like what the hell that works. When fully healthy, how would you figure out the Vlaco Zeke Green trio? Would you keep them keep the odd one on the bench, maybe trade up or maybe stagger MPJ and play just one of them? This MPJ stagger is something we've kind of forgotten about because we haven't seen it in a while. Yep. It's been mostly Jamal Murray staggering with the bench. And personally, I would much rather prefer an MPJ stagger. I feel like Denver found something briefly with that. Yeah. Maybe a month ago or two months ago. And then Michael Porter Jr. missed all that time and they haven't gone back to it. They've gone to Murray with the bench. But MPJ with the bench, in my opinion, is the move just because it you can hopefully center some things around him. You can just get him some shots that way. Him and Bones have said before that they want to play together. So in theory, I think there could be good chemistry between those two. I think MPJ staggering with the bench is what the Nuggets should try to get to. There's a but there attached to it for me, though, and it's what you said with MPJ playing with the starters in this last game. And it's if you're going to do it, much like the Murray dynamic, find ways to get him involved, right? 
he's not just a distraction. And in fact, even if he were, he's a better distraction if you throw the ball to him every now and then, or maybe run him off some screens. And I know they want that unit to get stops and flow. And I know Malone tries actually not to call too many plays, but maybe every now and then you can just call one for, for Porter with the bench just to get him. Like Porter jacking up a contested shot is as good a look as 90% of what the bench units generate anyway. <laughs> yeah. So a contested Michael Porter Jr. three. That's a great look for the Nuggets. I'll, bench unit. Dude, like I'm fine. You know, we could watch DeAndre Jordan try to catch the ball. So yeah. it's it's the same thing. I liked that stagger, but I don't uh they gotta find ways to get him involved. And it's tough because as commenters just point out, you know, he can't dribble much. He's not getting shots on ball. So that's that's work for the staff and Porter to do in terms of how does he find those shots. Yeah, I mean, another person that works really well in the – the word of the year, by the way, stagger. Oh, yeah, stagger. we just love dropping the word the stagger. Word sta- stagger. Word, the, the, the word of last year was spacing. The, the word of this year is stagger. Stagger. So the stagger. The stagger. I like to see, K- I like to see KCP. Uh, like, we've seen that a few times. That like actually that – that's like a super versatile guy. That guy, he's able to be a defensive presence. He's able to, you know – um, provide the spacing for the stagger, um, and he just—it just works well. He's like KCP is a great player that can give you as much or as little as you need. Like mm-hmm. if Bones is running the show and he's cooking, like KCP is very happy to sit back and just play defense. Um, if the bench needs shooting, like. KCP is able to step up. It's like, it's actually like we. I don't know if we even like really talk about like how great of a fit he is in that he fits in every situation. I think he's just such a great fit that it's just assumed, I know. and we like yeah. don't even have to mention yeah, it. Yeah, we like don't even bring it up. Yeah, it's like oh yeah, KCP, perfect yeah, yeah, yeah. fit. Yeah, he's great. There yeah. was there was like two weeks where he didn't hit a shot, and then he started hitting all the shots again, and that was. Other than that, it's it was been a, staggering. It's been a very peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Should we start staggering we people on this podcast? <laughs> yeah. Dude, I can, I, you can stagger me. Can we can stagger stag. you with the third segment. <laughs> Please. Please. Where's Dev? <laughs> yeah. Dev, Dev is doing a heavy stagger right Dude, yeah, now. Dev, yeah. Dev is the top stagger, yeah. for sure. He's our biggest stagger. <laughs> All right, let's hit another question here. Maybe one more before this next break. Uh, this one comes from uh, GP Nuggets. Nice. Which would Yoke have an easier time getting? 70 Damn. points or 25 assists? 70 points, no question. 25 assists assume, assumes other people make baskets. What's the most assists ever recorded in a game? Scott Skiles. Didn't he have like 35 or something? Um, What's the number? Yeah. I think it might be 30. Okay. I'm no going to say 25, way. bro. Yoke doesn't get enough calls to score 70. Oh, but he could, if he just decided it was 30. to score. Scott Skiles, 30, actually, in a game against the Denver Nuggets. Nice. Jokic doesn't need, but he, Jokic doesn't need calls to score 70 points. He just needs he, to decide he, he wants to score 70. What he needs 70. is three-pointers. That's yeah, what he, he needs. But he also has to just simply decide he wants to do it. That yeah. three-stonk report, by the way, is up. Yoke's taking Whoop. that thing confidently. Dude, yeah. I've, been, I've been making some cash off that, uh, off that stunk. <laughs> I think he has an easier time getting 70 points. Because if he was up to like 20 assists, I feel like there's no way teams would continue to double him in that game. No, huh? They would definitely just start making him score. I mean, there have been games where Jokic could have easily had 25 assists, but like people just don't hit the shots. You know, like, That's why it's so hard. Sorry, bro. I'm sorry I gave it to you right in the bread basket. Yeah. You just couldn't knock it down. Like, what am I Somebody should go here? back and look at the. Um, like Jokic's potential assists game oh my by God. game, oh and my just God. see what the is highest that assi- is. That a stat? That it, is a stat. it is a stat. Yeah, potential assists. He's got. I feel be like we there. should incorporate potential assists more into our screen assists. I was just going to say scre- screen. Uh, yeah, yeah, who screen cares assist. about screen assists? <laughs> potential assists. Potential <laughs> assists is way more ambiguous. Dude, his PA, his PA AJ has been off the chain, dude. <laughs> All right. Do we have another? Uh, do we have time for another question before next break? All right, let's do another break. More questions on the other side, including a lot of trade deadline what? questions. What? Not we for my those. Denver Nuggets. I've never written what? A lot of trade chatter. <laughs> this time of year? Yeah, this time of year. Guys, Game Time is the hottest new ticketing app, and I think a big reason why is because they've got the best deals on the best seats to myriad events. 
Uh, <laughs> myriad. Uh, if you, a if variety. You're, if you're in the nadir of That's your social right. setting, of your social. Uh, <laughs> but uh, for you guys, what you're trying to think about and talk about and go to are those Denver Nuggets games. And game time makes it easy because sometimes people decide last second they don't want to go see the Nuggets. I don't yeah. know why, but they do. Mm. And then sometimes people decide last second they want to try and go see the Nuggets. Oh, man, what a perfect pairing. Those are how two. Can those two how, how can those two sides meet? Never the twain shall meet. The twain shall meet at game time. <laughs> and one of the best ways you can support us is by clicking the link through the description, as Kale showed you accidentally on the back end on YouTube. We include the description in the show link. Uh, show description, we include the link, excuse me. And the same thing with your podcast description. So join over 15 million people who have downloaded the Game Time app and scored the best seats to all of your favorite events. Let's go. Eric, dude. how do you feel about stirs? I gotta tell you, man, people don't ask me about the way I feel about things that often. Yeah. And I'm happy to be asked this question. I'll tell you what I think about stirs. I love that it creates a homogenous experience. Ooh. <laughs> the word of the day. A homogenous. I like, I like that it creates a heliocentric lunch oh, experience. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it gives you a nice stagger from the... <laughs> I'll stop. These aren't even funny. <laughs> I, I couldn't think of a way there's to the stir. A stagger into that. There's the stir, there's the stagger, there's the queso, there's the margarita. It's all at Illegal Pete's. And Illegal Pete's is hooking you all up with something a little extra this year. Spend $100 on gift cards and score an extra 25 for free. Why are we telling you this? Because Illegal Pete's are not just our friends. They're our partners once again. So listen, there's one right down the, the street. Next time you're at the bar. There's a good chance you'll see us there. Next time you're at the bar and you're drinking and you're going, I had the Bones Highland Burger very recently. I would love it again, but I think I just want to change it up a little bit. Yeah, dude. But check out Illegal Pete's. They've got some great food uh, and some great gift cards as well. And finally, because there are not one, not two, but three reads on this break, fellas. We're going to tell you about our friends at Pins and Aces who put not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, but seven beers uh. in their new innovative product, the Beer Sleeve, which is just one of the many things they sell at the apparel partner, the official golf apparel partner of DNVR. We love Pins and Aces gear. We love local companies. This is an easy, easy partnership, easy call for us to make. They make amazing polos, hats, golf bags, and yeah, that beer sleeve. Because it's really important oh, to have as many beers as possible when you're golfing with the fellas. You need a or minimum the of seven beers for a round of golf. That's a fact. That's the number that Pins and Aces has decided and the number that is just universally accepted. Check out pinsandaces.com and use the code DNVR to receive 15% off your first order and get free shipping. That's pinsandaces.com. All right, we are back here on the DMVR Nuggets podcast, the DMBA show, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Use the code DMVR when you sign up and download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. We got a few more mailbag questions to get to. Let's see what we got here. This one comes from... Uh, is this Kevpar? Who's Kevpar? Oh. This is Travis Menard. Okay, Travis Menard. Where... Who are your top candidates for the Nuggets to acquire at the trade deadline? Kelly Olynyk. Make a move. What are you willing to give up? Kevin let, me, <laughs> let, let, let me first Kyrie. set the table by saying, I feel like the Nuggets' most likely player to get traded has to be Zeke Naji. Like I feel like it just has to be. But like it, for what? Like, do, are there other teams coveting Zeke Naji? I mean, I feel like you send Zeke Naji out, it comes. You have to attach a pick to it, like. Yeah, I feel like it'd be Zeke Naji and a pick. Yeah, it depends on what the return is. A Zeke Naji and a pick. I think the thing to remember about Denver, and we've talked about it, is there's they don't have a lot of those middle ground trades. They could do a huge reshuffling of the core, and very unlikely. Um, that will or happen. they can see what they can do with Zeke to find the backup big. And so it's like they're limited in terms of kind of going beyond the really small packages and the really small fixes. They don't have those in-between assets right now, in my opinion. Yeah. Zeke, it's like, if you're the Nuggets, the desire to trade him is this. Next, this summer, he's about to enter his fourth season. This is when you, like, negotiate a contract extension with your first-round pick. Why would the Nuggets negotiate a contract extension with him? His third season, he hasn't been able to consistently get minutes I just don't think he showed enough to warrant that extension. So you hope another team takes a flyer on him. Um, but I agree with you, D line. Like, it's not a very attractive asset right now, especially because he hasn't shot the ball well from three this year. You don't really know what his best position is right now. You know, does 
does Zeke and Peyton Watson add up to something? And then you attach. Do the Nuggets to want to trade Peyton right. Watson? That's, like so. I Again, don't. I don't think you're looking at. Uh, there's not a lot of avenues to. Oh, that's an objective improvement trade. There's like horizontal movement they can make, but it's yeah. it's not. I don't know if they're going to make any moves where we all look at each other and go, "Man, that's a grand slam." I think Alex Gruse is going to be the number one guy that every contender tries to go get. I don't know if really what his value is. I'm guessing the Bulls will try to get a first for him. Nuggets don't really have that many firsts to trade. I think they have to go like way down the line in, in years to trade a first. Um, but he's a guy every contender is going to want. I just... I would love it if he was a couple inches taller, though. <laughs> he's kind of like Bruce Brown. We've Brown-ish. already got our Bruce Brown, you know? Yeah. I, I wonder if he's too similar to Bruce Brown. Um, and then, you know, you talk about the backup center market, and there are definitely guys out there who it seems like you could get. I don't know if any of those guys are, like, that much better yeah. than Zeke Naji, though. Like that's the thing. I know. Like to me, to and me, do you really want to give up like a pick in one of those deals? Uh, is it, is there a backup five that we could get for DeAndre Jordan and Zeke Naji to get combined? Is there anything like a? Here are just some names of some backup centers that could potentially be available: Kelly Olynyk, Jakob Pertl, <laughs> Nas Reed, yeah, Mason Plumley, yeah, Chris Boucher. Jared Vanderbilt, Mo Bamba. Oh my God, Jared Vanderbilt. Mike Muscala. You're losing me. First three, though. <laughs> I mean, any literally. Are any of those needle movers? No, but they probably improve your backup center position. I think that they're almost all needle movers, and mm. we're getting abs- we're getting fl- if absolute flat line from the backup center. That like getting true. anything moves the needle. Like we're getting nothing. Like How can't... annoying can Marcus cut to Marcus Cousins be? How I know. <laughs> can he really be that poisonous? Not, like Maybe four months is, uh, four months together. I'm Charles? saying, like, listen, like we were able to withstand him in the locker room for the second half of the season last year. Why not rip, bring the band back together? I, I literally I, I was under the impression that it was going well. Like they he was in press conferences, he was joking with other people. I, I don't know all the backstory. It is a, it is Astounding to me that he is not no on the NBA team. No teams. He's yeah. He's not even on a roster. He played good basketball. He was awesome. He was great, dude. He won a game for us. Also, like, he almost won that game five too. Remember when Nicole Jokic yes. got injured game five against the Warriors and Demarcus Cousins just yes. caught fire. Oh my god, I did forget about that. Yeah, I'm saying like. You know, you if people, like couldn't walk in that game. When people look at Denver, game? they're like, "Oh, you know what? That team's missing. They're missing the, that enforcer, that like jerky guy. Like, like was, that's a jerk." Was he just like kidnapping <laughs> teammates' dogs? Like, what was happening? Bones Island? Oh no, 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 no! Oh, 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 oh! oh, oh. Uh, we're just joking. That's not real speculation. <laughs> that's not real speculation. Uh, but he was I am player. amazed. But like, that is a move that should be made. That is a move that costs you no capital other than actual capital, no draft capital. You don't have to make a move. You don't have to uh, give anybody up that you consider valuable. You don't have to move on from anybody. Um, You could just simply not keep the backup center that's not giving you anything right now and, like, actually bring somebody in that can – you actually feel comfortable playing. Um, I don't know. It it is confounding to me. I hope that – that is a move that is made. That that is the one. I mean, I I'm not alone in this. You see this all the time. But like, really, man. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah, I just wouldn't count on it. Yeah, I wouldn't hold my breath. I'm a, for no, it. I, I agree not. with you. Like, no, I wouldn't yeah, count on it. Better there just than to, what we've got, but there just has to be something significant about it. So, well, it is yep. what it is. All right, what else do we got here in the mailbag? More trade questions, probably. Oh, yeah, we got some in the chat. Hell yeah, yeah chat. let's do that. Let's go, chat. Brian Wendland, how do we get more minutes for Christian Brown? Uh, we thank gotta you for find this him. question. Where can they be? <laughs> 11 man rotation, fewer Check Jamal minutes, issues. fewer Bruce Brown minutes. How, so, do, we, how do we find <laughs> I can find minutes for him. Yeah. <laughs> I can. And I mean, it starts with decreasing Jamal Murray's minutes. Jamal played 36 minutes yeah. last night against Minnesota. I still think that's a little too much. Drop him down to 30. There's six minutes right there. Um, then you can look at KCP. Cook win. Take a minute or so off of his total. 
Bruce Brown, I actually think, should probably be playing less than he is right now. Play 22 minutes, drop him down to 20, drop Vlatko from 17 to 15, boom. There's like 12, 13 minutes for Christian Brown right there. So, so that's how you would start. And then, of course, depending on the game and how he's playing, you could increase that or decrease that in the second half. I just think it's so obvious that he should be in the rotation even when the Nuggets are at full health like they were last night. And I think it's crazy that he only got three minutes. So I, I think there's definitely ways to get him more minutes. It's just you have to decrease some of the minutes of your main guys. Are we overvaluing him? Like, are we? Is he, is this is he just like the new thing that we like? And he's played well. Are we? Are, are we just? I mean, are, when I say we, I don't mean you. You, you <laughs> so no, no, I'm, I'm definitely overvaluing I, him. <laughs> I just. I mean, is, is there something that we don't understand? Well, because don't you, it seems obvious, but. The answer is probably somewhere in the middle, right? You know, like I think Harrison's a hundred percent right that you've seen enough, you've seen more good than bad to be confused by the lack of minutes. Michael Malone has said it himself. That's the crazy thing. He has said, "I have got to this find a the, way to get him more minutes." The thing Especially that is like so, confusing. but then he's also said, "It's tough to get him minutes when we're fully healthy." That the craziest thing about it is that this is the most tailor-made, out of a factory Michael Malone player, gritty Charlie Hustle true, plays defense, and he's not getting minutes with Michael Malone. Is there something we are missing? They're also not full strength. Jeff's out, which you would think makes it so much easier to find the minutes. And in fact, they did initially. They just then went away from them last night. And by they, I mean Michael. Look, nobody's saying here that Christian Brown is going to suddenly fix the Nuggets' entire defense. Or that last night, he would have won the game if he had He would played. most assuredly not won the game. The Nuggets had Probably no chance. Probably not. Nobody's saying that. It's just that he would have helped, yeah, I yeah. think, on the second out of back-to-back. Yeah. When your defense was struggling, I think it would have helped. That's all I'm saying. I, I mean, I, I, I definitely, definitely agree. It's just at a certain point, you know, when we're talking about these things, it seems so obvious. It's like, are we... <sighs> Are we just gassing each other up? Are we like seeing well, sure. something that isn't there? Yeah, we do that every day. That's uh, great. I don't feel like I've ever been gassed up. I, by I you would guys. think like <laughs> wins in the right direction. Is it possible that he's overstating him? Maybe, but that's a reaction to the the other side of it, which is the lack of minutes. You know what I mean? Like I've been there where you're defending like a flawed or limited impact of a player to such an extent because you're sort of floored by any sort of pushback to it. So I think the answer is probably in the middle, man. Look, yeah. I know there are people within Nuggets who think he should be playing more, but he's not right now. So it's I'm, just I'm the reality. You. I'm with you. I think he should be. You know? I mean, I'm with you also. I just I, I just have to ask the question. I don't know. Thanks for asking. Uh, no this problem. comes from <laughs> Nicola. Whoa. What do you think about taking every starter out early and leaving only Jokic with four other bench guys? The other four stars can become the bench in a way later on. I'm not going to lie. We've had to think about the bench a lot this season. Yeah. I have thought about this, like playing Jokic with the bench. Well, he, he has. Jokic has been part of the stagger. There have been times when Jokic stays in well beyond the first quarter. It's him and a bunch of like of the bench. Again, whatever the bench is. We, it's a very unclear we, definition. You see it at the end of the first quarter, yes. Yes. When everybody comes out. KCP, Jamal, Michael Porter, Aaron Gordon, and then for a minute or so, it's Jokic and four bench guys. We see that at the end of first quarters. Yes. Is it particularly effective? It's not not effective, but it's also like not like, you know, like blowing the world down. I don't know. Yeah. I think it's I think it's an interesting thought. Um, I don't know if I I don't know if I'm that in favor of it just because I think I share this opinion with the Nuggets that like we want to maximize the Nikola Jokic minutes yeah. and just absolutely murder teams when he's on the floor, yeah. which is what they've done. So it's also you got to be careful with how we weigh this stuff out. You could look at any given loss and say that might have helped, but Denver's general approach to the regular season for the last five years, like they have 
done as much to earn the benefit of the doubt in the regular season Why? as any. Are you saying that because they're in first place? In yeah. The West? What about their win? approach this year? Because <laughs> they win so many games. The bench has <laughs> sucked all year, and they're number one in the West <laughs> at 24. So that's the thing. It's a little bit of like... It's not exactly ruining their season. <laughs> right. I don't know if you want a radical, radical shift in I approach. Agree. Yeah. I agree. I think your head's in the right place. But there. it might save you some games here or there. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It's something I've thought about, but... It's not so broke that it's costing them right. win after win after yeah, win. Yeah, that's that that is the thing to keep in, in perspective here. It's like not they shouldn't be shaking up anything. Yeah. They should be like making minor tweaks, like but we're not at the place where you just like throw anything against the wall because it's just not working. We have to find some solution. Yeah. How about don't play the bench at all in the comments? Oh, there. I love that. Well, what that's great. what could happen in the playoffs. <laughs> that's why I'm looking forward to the playoffs. <laughs> that's the beauty yes. of the playoffs. <laughs> Can't wait. Uh, T Web, who do you want the Nuggets to trade? Thoughts on Jakob Pertle? Be great. Jakob Pertle will be great. He could uh, he set could, some illegal screens on say, some opponents. Some Charlie horses. <laughs> yeah. say he could uh, set a screen for Jamal and actually injure him on the same team. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be fun, yeah. Would the Spurs I like, like Zeke Naji? I feel like he could be a Spurs-type player. Possible. There's actually, in the Spurs... Are like, Do you I, think Greg Popovich likes that he plays the piano? Maybe. I don't think anyone doesn't like that he plays the piano. We like it. I love it. We don't get I gotta say, I'm trending towards... I'm just kidding. My man's not a piano man. Yeah. Uh... But the Spurs are looking to lose games. Yes. Jakob Pertl is a good player. The Spurs are looking to uh, Wemby their lives. Nice. So, you Wemby. know, there, I mean, there are, it, it is worth looking at teams that are like absolutely looking to uh, burn it all down at this exact moment to try to get, you know, one of those top two players next year. So it's like, okay, let's look at, yes, the, the Spurs. Uh, let's look at, I don't know, like the Pistons. Who else is like absolutely trying to burn it down right now? Would you say, uh, the Lakers <laughs> Do we, eventually we any interested in LeBron, James? Charlotte, Orlando. There's actually not a ton of blatant tanking in my opinion. I mean, Houston probably just, they don't even have to try to tank. They the problem with their, Houston is they don't have any good players. Yeah. They just play their guys <laughs> and that's the same effect. Yeah, I don't know if it's been as blatant as people thought it would. Toronto, be. I think you'll see so. See Toronto, parts pretty Toronto is interesting because they actually have some players like you know the OG Ananobi, not a center, but like a very versatile player that Nuggets Nation has wanted sure. ever since that they sure. they missed out on him on draft night. Thanks, yeah. Tim. Thanks, Tim, <laughs> um, for Jokic and Murray and Porter and Aaron Gordon and yeah, the whole starting unit. Um, <laughs> but I mean, the, it, it it feels like. This is the thing. It's like in 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 the economy, there are people uh, in power. Like money, big bank takes little bank. The Nuggets are in a position to actually take advantage of teams that are in bad spots, and they should actually absolutely be like trying to flex that muscle. Yes, you know? I mean, one of my I predictions like for the next couple months is the Nuggets will definitely make a trade. I think they absolutely, like 95%, will make a trade. I think at this point we've seen enough, and I'm not even trying to pile on the player. Like, this is an organizational perspective. It's probably a, a massive mismanagement of a potential asset to not trade Zeke. You just didn't play him at all. Right, but nobody m m may want him. Sure. That's, well, that's, that's a But what it's, you, also that's like, a it's also like we've counter. seen this in the past, where it's like we got to make a trade, and then make a trade, they, then they... Michael Malone doesn't play him. Well, that's fun, too. That's something Travail that McGee. Calvin Booth has to think about for sure. Yes. It, because it's already tough to get Christian Brown minutes. Yes. Imagine if I trade for a guy like that, because that's what the Nuggets, I think, would be trading for, first and foremost. A 3-4 who can defend. That's who the Nuggets will be looking for. But Calvin Booth's got to be thinking, if I get that guy, is he going to play? Is he going to play over Jeff Green? Yeah. I, I, mean, I don't I know. Get the, I get the sense that Calvin Booth likes this aspect of GMing, like he likes finding the guy, making the deal. Be, like my criticism of Tim was always that he was a really good draft day GM, but really bad on the phone GM. Like he didn't mm -hmm. like outside of that Aaron Gordon trade, great trade, but more often than not, it felt like he wasn't, he, he didn't make great like GM moves along with other GMs. But Calvin yeah. strikes me as a guy that will and, yeah. and, so I well no we'll see obviously like 
his personality is going to come out and he'll, he's going to start to form this team in his vision even more and more as we go along. But mm-hmm. I, I do get the sense that that is going to be part of his repertoire. Yeah. All right. I think we got to wrap up here, Kale. Are we, are we close to being done? All right. We are out of time. Thank you guys for Good the chat. questions. Good Sorry there are ones we couldn't get to. Maybe we'll hit those tomorrow because we will have a show tomorrow. I think Nuggets will have practice tomorrow too. So we'll have a recap from that as well. Thank you guys for tuning in. We got the Buff Show coming up next. So we want some primetime chatter. Primetime. Stick (laughs) around. Uh, We'll talk to you guys tomorrow.